This video of a fight between an auto driver and a female passenger went viral a few weeks ago. He was even arrested for it. I will not talk in Canada. Hello, hello. What shouting is there? Hello. I will not talk in Canada. For many Kannadigas, these are not just casual incidents. It's also about cultural and political autonomy, and they always lead to a debate on language imposition, the imposition of Hindi to be specific. The issue is no doubt an emotional one, but there are real concerns about educational and employment opportunities. So let's make sense of why over the last few years we have seen such a huge movement in Karnataka. Let's figure out if Hindi is really needed to unite India. And when there is a pushback against any kind of hegemony, can it really be called parochialism? Have you noticed how on English news channels, anchors and panelists just happily switch to Hindi with no subtitles? This too is imposition of Hindi. And if you are an Indian who does not understand Hindi, you'll be left in the dark. Here at the News Minute, we understand the South better than anybody else: the politics, the culture, and the people. If you like our journalism, then support us by becoming a paid TNM subscriber. Look south, think TNM. First things first. There's a huge difference between rejecting Hindi and rejecting the imposition of Hindi. One common argument in favor of Hindi is that it's necessary to unite India, but that's not true. India is a union of states, each with its own language and culture. Hindi isn't needed to bring us together. In fact, forcing one language onto everyone does the exact opposite. It divides us. Another claim is that Hindi is India's national language. Again, false. India has no national language. We have 22 official languages and Hindi is just one of them, along with Kannada, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, English and many others. Then there's the idea that Hindi should be the link language for everyone. But this puts Hindi speakers at an unfair advantage. If a link language is needed, English makes more sense. It's neutral ground for all of us, equally familiar or alien. So why the strong opposition to Hindi? Two main reasons. First, it's about protecting cultural and political autonomy. Forcing Hindi onto non-Hindi speaking states like Karnataka is seen as a way to undermine local languages and cultures. People here believe that each state should have the freedom to prioritize its own language in schools, government offices, and even in daily life. Secondly, it affects education and jobs. By making Hindi mandatory in schools or for government positions, people who do not speak it, like Kannada speakers, get locked out of opportunities. The thing is, when the union government takes it upon itself to promote Hindi, it's clearly seen as a problem. परंतु जरूरत है कि देश की एक भाषा हो जिसके कारण विदेशी भाषाओं को जगह न मिले और देश की एक भाषा हो इसी दृष्टि को ध्यान में रखते हुए हमारे पुरखों ने हमारे स्वतंत्र सेनानियों ने राजभाषा की कल्पना की थी और राजभाषा के रूप में हिंदी को स्वीकार किया था इन इट्स पॉलिसी लेट मी शो यू हाउ द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट डिस्क्रिमिनेट्स इन 2014 द आईपीबीएस व्हिच हैंडल्स हायरिंग फॉर पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक स्टार्टेड होल्डिंग एग्जाम्स ओनली इन इंग्लिश एंड हिंदी In 2019 the IBPS notified that preliminary exams for clerical posts in nationalized banks will be held only in Hindi and English same is the case for competitive exams like UPSC naturally this caused a lot of frustration in states like Karnataka job seekers language activists and even politicians like Siddaramaiah and Kumar Swami spoke out against it the problem is the policy puts Kannada speakers at a huge disadvantage Earlier candidates had to have studied Kannada up to class 10 to be eligible but that requirement was relaxed resulting in fewer Kannadigas getting banking jobs one activist pointed out that only 10% of banking jobs in Karnataka are now filled by locals leading to a 90% job loss for Kannadigas but it's not just about the jobs Kannada speaking customers are struggling too there are cases where bank employees straight up ask them to speak in hindi which leaves people feeling frustrated when they can't even get basic banking services in their own language especially in rural areas where people can speak only their mother tongues be it kannada tulu tamil or telugu we've seen so many videos of bank employees refusing service to customers for not knowing hindi 
and this attitude is enabled by policy changes made by the union government. In most nationalized banks, the application forms, chalans, digital boards, nameplates are all either in Hindi or English. And even banks like State Bank of Mysore, Syndicate Bank, Vichya Bank have been merged despite them being profitable. And not just banks. The story is the same in post offices, insurance offices, and there's also the issue with government schemes. Even the Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana. This is a scheme that offers small businesses loans. Most post offices have information about the scheme only in English or Hindi. In Ekalavya schools, which were set up by the Government of India for tribal students, Hindi was made mandatory for teachers' recruitment, even if the schools were in Tamil Nadu or Kerala or Karnataka. Then there is the business of the union government pushing the celebration of Hindi Divas. On September 14th every year, across all union government-run entities like banks, railways, postal services, income tax departments, central universities and even public sector companies, activities and events are planned to mark the occasion. Look at Nimhans for example. It's based in Bengaluru, but this time around they're hosting a bunch of competitions in Hindi specifically for staff whose mother tongue isn't Hindi. Such is the Modi government's eagerness to push Hindi that the official language committee, which typically submits reports every five years, has tabled two reports in just three years. This committee, by the way, is headed by Amit Shah. One of the key recommendations in the 11th report submitted in 2022 is the promotion of Hindi as the primary medium of instructions both in technical and non-technical educational institutions. It also suggests making English as an optional language rather than a mandatory one. Imagine this. Institutions like AIMS, IITs and even Kendriya Vidyalayas could be forced to teach primarily in Hindi with English as optional. This is a direct threat to linguistic diversity and access to education for non-Hindi speaking students. And it doesn't stop there. Even the names of the criminal laws have been changed to Hindi. Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita, the Bharatiya Nagrik, the Bharatiya Nagrik Suraksha Sanhita, and the Bharatiya Saksha Adinayam. Can you imagine how difficult it is to pronounce these names? It's perhaps not even possible for some of them. Essentially, a large section of the population find it difficult to even pronounce the names of our laws. This was flagged off, by the way, by the parliamentary committee last term, but the Modi government went ahead with it anyway. From announcements in metros to on flights, the usage of Hindi violates both the right to be informed and right to safety. International airlines make an effort to use the local language in their pre-recorded messages, both in the language of where the flight takes off from and lands. So what's stopping Indian ones from doing this? Imagine on a flight from Bengaluru to Chennai, the announcements are made in Hindi. This debate isn't just about South. In northern states, many languages that are similar to Hindi have been sidelined or absorbed into Hindi, erasing their unique identities. Between 1961 and 2011, the percentage of Hindi speakers shot up from 30% to 44%. But this growth came at the expense of other languages that have similarities to Hindi, like Kurmali, which once was a distinct language but was lumped under Hindi in the 1971 census. So it's clear, it isn't just after BJP came to power that Hindi is being imposed by the union government. History shows us that Congress too is guilty of pushing Hindi down our throats. But in the last decade, there's certainly a right-wing campaign which wants to call non-Hindi speakers who stand up for their language as anti-India elements. It particularly escalated after the Sidramaya government's attempt to have an official state flag for Karnataka. Just look at how provocative these tweets are. In Karnataka and Bengaluru specifically, there's some element of anger that people from across the country have come and settled down here, depriving local residents of jobs and slowly erasing their cultures. While any government should work at reducing these tensions, the union government's policies to push Hindi has increased the frustration. And eventually, who suffers? Common people. Look. Politics aside, the issue is not just a social media campaign or an excuse for hooliganism on the roads. Changes in policies can actually help people from different parts get along better. Like amending the constitution so that all 22 languages listed in the 8th schedule get equal status as official and administrative languages. 
or creating new recruitment rules for jobs in states like Karnataka, making it mandatory for candidates to pass a written test in Kannada and allowing non-Hindi speakers to take exams in their mother tongues. A forced uniformity in culture and language will only create more animosity and asserting one's linguistic identity is neither parochialism or language chauvinism. One just needs to know when the boundary is crossed. That's it from me for this week. By the way, we come to you now on Saturdays every week. So make sure that you catch a new episode of Let Me Explain every Saturday. And wherever you are watching this from, be it from a southern state or even if you're a Hindi speaker, please do write to me at pooja at the newsminute.com and tell me what you think of the points I made today. Many of you do write to me regularly and you do tell me what your views are and it does help us bridge the gap. 